Hello, everyone. I am honored and delighted to be here. And uh, my talk is going to be on why we must all join politics, or why we must all be politicians. And in the next few minutes, uh, permit me to divide my talk into three segments. Uh, on the first segment, I will talk about my personal political history, briefly. And secondly, in the second segment, I will try and talk about where we are politically as a nation. And then lastly, I will talk on the topic, which is why we must all be politicians. And starting with the history, my political history, I will try and be brief, because I started politics exactly 22 years ago. I joined politics December 2000. And at that time, I joined the political party APP. I joined at my ward in Kawaji, Nasara local government. And I think a year into it, I uh, decided to go for the position of councillor of my ward. Since that period to today, I've held, oh, I've been part I participated in a number of uh, uh, different components in the political process. And the first one that I want to talk to you about is the elective positions that I've gone, uh, that I've contested for. Like I started with that of uh, the councillorship of my ward. In 2000, I think in uh, 2004, that was when the election uh, took place, uh, the primary election, and I lost. It was just 18 people. The votes were just 18. I know each and every one of them by name. <laughs> I have been to their houses. I have been to their places of uh, business. I know them. And in the day, on the eve of the election, I went to the first uh, person's house in the night, 2 a.m. I knocked, I knocked, his wife came in, his first wife, he has three wives, she came out, she said, ah, I buy an yapita. I said, at 2 a.m., <laughs> you know, I said, okay, Toshiki, and I said, and I left the next guy. I went to his house, and he was also not around. I said, Kai, I went to the third guy. He was also not around. And that was the first trigger that I had that something was wrong. The next morning, we went to the election ground. It was a guest house of one of the politicians in my area. And the, they came and all the elders, blah, blah, blah. You should know that uh, politics is not a do or die affair. It is uh, politics that uh, I honestly had no clue. No clue they were just doing their thing. So after they finished all their talking and it was time to vote, just let me try and be brief. They were trying to vote and I went to that, into that election I counted out of that 18 votes, I counted 13. And unfortunately for me, after the vote uh, was done and dusted, you know, I only got four. Four out of 18. I think politically, in the two decades that I've been a politician, that was practically the saddest moment of my life. Because I know that. To be honest, and I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet, even though I think I'm allowed to do it on this stage, but I think I was a little bit better candidate than the other person. But I felt if they had that many of them, if they had known up to 14 of them knew that he is a better candidate, why waste our time? Tell me, and I will withdraw, and I will support him, and we will go and win the election. So that was what pained me at that time. But after they finished everything and I was given a chance to speak, I said, I need just one favor. Please permit me to be his campaign manager. They all said, oh, that's very good of you, and agreed. Uh, he didn't have a car. I had a very small Civic, what they called uh, Jaikim Babangida. That's a very small one. I had that one, and that was what we used to campaign for him. And that was how that one was story. In 2017, you no, know, 2007, I went on to contest for uh, uh, chairman, Nasara local government chairman. At that time, I think we contested with the current uh, deputy governor of Kano State, Dr. Nasir Yusuf Governor, who was going for his second term at that time. Uh, that one, too, I lost the primary election. 
I went on in 2011 to contest for state assembly member under the AP, uh, the CPC, uh, Bahari's party after we left AMPP. That one too, I lost the primary election. You know, I did not give up because that past experience has really hardened me. So there was no shaking. We'll just move on to the next one. Uh, prior, before that one, I also contested for, at the party level, I contested for uh, welfare officer that's under AMPP. You know, that one, uh, the primary election didn't even take place, so I didn't even get it. These are the elective positions that I've contested, and uh, unfortunately, I lost all. Then, in the political party, I've also participated in a number of activities. In 2003, during President Muhammad Buhari's first uh, election, I was the returning officer of my party uh, in my ward, and uh, uh, we did that one successfully. I delivered my ward. You know, as a politician, the slogan is, if you don't deliver your ward, you are useless in politics. So I always take pride in that the first election of President Buhari, I delivered my word as the returning officer of my party. I may clap small. <laughs> <laughs> Only the politicians will understand what this means. In 2011, I was also co-opted into the welfare, pre uh, the presidential campaign committee of President Muhammad Baru under CPC. I was in the welfare committee. The current minister of water resources, uh, Kazore, was the chairman of our committee. Uh, we did that one, finished that one, and in 2015 again, under APC, I was part of the presidential campaign committee again, I think under the youth, uh, youth wing on that one. So you can see the level of uh, uh, different components that I've, uh, I've done politically. And then the last component in this first segment is that of uh, the political appointments that, I, that I've held. The first one was the legislative aide of Honorable Balarabo Okili, who was the then uh, member of the Federal House of Representatives representing my local government, Nasrallah local government. I uh, was his uh, legislative aide from 2003 to 2007. And then after 2007, I was the, public, uh, the secretary of the Kano State AMPP Publicity Committee. Uh, apart from that one, uh, that was during Shekharos regime, right? Yeah. Apart from that one, uh, I became the DG media uh, to the Kano State uh, uh, Governor, Dr. Abla Omar Ganduje. And then two years later, I was elevated to uh, the special advisor media, a position which I held until I become unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> so in brief, this is my political journey, you understand? And in all these two decades, uh, going into the third one of my political journey, what I have, my biggest takeaway in all this, not that incidence of the primary election when I ran, ran for councillor, not that one. That one is a big lesson, but the biggest takeaway for me personally is the number of net, the networks that I have, the number of people that I've interacted with. That is the biggest win for me. Nobody, as you can see, this is the result of these two decades of interacting with different people. You understand? That is the biggest takeaway for me. And according to Mala Amin Kanu, politics is nothing but man management. It's not about winning elections. You know, there are people that are excellently well, but they don't contest for election. But politically, they are excellently well. It is because of their ability to manage relationships. And that is the biggest takeaway for me uh, as a person. That's the first segment. Quickly running into the second segment that I wanted to talk to you about, which is where we are today politically as a nation. And unfortunately for us, I think we are in a very bad shape as a country. We are in a bad shape because unfortunately, the majority of our leaders, I wouldn't say all, but the majority of our leaders, you know, are not uh, there based on merit. The majority of our leaders are not looking after the welfare of the citizens. The majority of our leaders focus on themselves, focus on the next election that they are going to contest for, or the next appointment that they are going to get, and unfortunately, that has dampened the, the, the political system in this country. Unfortunately, 
What that has also led to is the fact that we are breeding you know, a new set of uh, 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 leaders that are also looking up to this type of politicians that we have now. Almost all the, uh, the youth that are going into politics, each time someone comes to me and says, I want to be a politician, I always ask him, why are you going into politics? And you hear all sorts of stories. But I remember the question, I asked myself this same question. And this is why I'm asking anybody that comes to me, why are you joining politics? And for me, the answer that I gave myself that December 2000, I answered myself that at that time, my father was about 50 something, uh, some something years, I think. And he has given almost all his life, over 50 years, into politics. He started at 24 years. I also started at the age of 24. And you can see up to today at 97, this year he will be 97. He's still giving or contributing politically to the development of the country. This is, this is the reason I wanted to join politics. But unfortunately, that is not really the case for a lot of our system. And so as such, it has bastardized the political process. You know, we do not have a proper political, um, internal democracy in our political parties. They do not care about proper uh, primary election, as you can see from my own case study. They don't do it, they don't, they don't care about competence. They all want it, they only want to support their own uh, boys. And if you dare to be different, they will frustrate you, they will shut you down, maybe you will get arrested, and maybe you end up being sacked. But all the same, <laughs> but all the same, you have to be your own man. You have to be different because this is what the system uh, needs. Unfortunately, that lack of internal democracy, you know, has made our political parties not to be uh, based on ideology. A lot of them don't have manifestos. And the few that have manifestos, they don't abide by that manifesto. Manifesto, for those that don't know, is simply the principles that shape the ideology of a political party. For instance, if you take the Democratic Party, and the Republican Party of the United States of America, you can, I am here, and I can tell you what these parties stand for. Basically, the Democratic Party is more or less a liberal uh, political party, that's their ideology, while on the other hand, the Republican Party is the conservative party. But for instance, then Allah, if I should ask you, what is the difference between APC and PDP today? All those, you know, all those, all those that are there are almost the same. They are just, it's just, you know, what they call in agri, what they call in agri, shifting cultivation. You know? <laughs> you know? Unfortunately for us, this is the political party that we have. This is the political parties that we have. You know? A, 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 a lot of those that when we are campaigning as APC, a lot, of those, a lot of those that we were shouting, ah, oh, one is corrupt, this one is corrupt, this one did this. Unfortunately for us, most of them have now shifted to APC. And the saddest part, the saddest part of it all is that some of them were deceived by our president. How do we tell our younger ones that this is something we should emulate? You know, to me, this is very sad. And this is something that I will never condone politically you know, we have to define our ideology as a political party. And the, and the last part in this segment is the fact that the political parties are the only means of getting into power. You understand? You cannot become a governor, a councillor, a House of Reps member, a senator without a political party. You need a political party, which is the vehicle that will convey you. From, from, from your campaign to, 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 to elective position. Even if you are not going for elective position, you are going for an appointment, it is still that political party that will get you appointed. So if we do not have the political parties uh, uh, very strong and, and solid, on solid foundations, then how do we expect to produce quality and competent leaders? That is the problem of where we are today as a country. Now the third segment, which is the last, before I tell you why we must all be politicians, first of all, I want to tell you what you need to do 
before that opportunity brings itself, which is capacity building. There is no way you will be like you are and not build your capacity as an individual. All the speakers that have spoken before me, they have all mentioned how and how the different processes that you can build your capacity as an individual. They have, we've all had them. I've learned tons and tons of knowledge from the precious speakers that we had on this stage. They have all spoken excellently well. That is capacity building, and all they are saying, if I can summarize it, is capacity building. Build your capacity. Do you know why you should build your capacity? You will end up one day, you are doing your thing, and then, you know, before you know it, one day, you are appointed someone you know, you have a godfather politically, and say, okay, please come and take this. You are the DG media of the governor. And then you don't know you are a media person, you've worked, you know, tirelessly, just like Haji Azenab gave example of that person that was given an opportunity to come and get an employment. And because all you know is theory, he has not practicalized the theory that he learned in school. You couldn't take the appointment. So imagine you are given that responsibility and you do not have the capacity. You do not have the knowledge. You do not have the necessary, the required skills to deliver your job diligently well. Then Allah will say, you are, not only, you are not only affecting yourself, but you are also affecting your principal. That is how we are. So the first knowledge is build your capacity. Whatever you are doing, whatever you, wherever you find yourself, be good at it. Even if it means your job is empty in soccer way, there will be a day they will be looking for professional soccer way emptier. <laughs> and then you'll be called upon and you make your money. You understand? So like, the first thing is build your capacity. You will never know when it will come in handy. If there's one thing that you should take away from this event today, the entire event, is build your capacity, whatever it is that you are into. Now, moving on quickly to why we must all be politicians. The number one thing that I'll tell you is that whether you know it or not, we are all politicians. Do you know why? I, I, I always use this example. For instance, going with the definition of uh, Mala Aminu Kanu when he said politics is merely man management, between a husband and a wife is also man management. Those, those that are married will understand. It's man management. I call that home politics. If you do not know how to do this, you always end up in problem. So therefore, man management starts from home. It extends to your friends, it extends, extends to your colleagues, it extends to your superiors, it extends to the environment, your immediate environment, the larger environment, and so on and so forth. Therefore, learn how to manage relationships. It will be very important for you. Whatever you do, even if it means uh, 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 hurting yourself, not physically, but try and, as much as you can, wherever you live, wherever you meet someone, make sure you leave a positive or, uh, impression on that person. Whatever you do, just try. You know, by adding one, two, three, four, before you know it, you know a lot of people that have good uh, uh, experience uh, with you. That's one. And then secondly, when you, uh, after talking about uh, uh, the political, the, uh, the relationship uh, management, or man management, as Mala Amin Kono uh, call it, the second thing is, by a show of hand, how many of us here are card-carrying members of a political party? Card-carrying members, not that you support a party, you, you have a card, either APC, PDP, ABGA, whatever it is, how many? Just look at it. You see? Not up to 10. But how many of us here are politicians? Those that support one candidate or the other, raise your hands. You know, just look at how the hands are going up. So what you need to do is to participate in the politics. You have to be a card carrying member for the majority of us, you know, because there will be a role for you to play in politics. Don't leave it for the uh, 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 the, the, the uh, incompetent ones and those that are not qualitative enough to produce you the leaders uh, that, you, that you have. And then one last thing that I want to add in this, 
uh, category is the majority of us in this hall are youth. And I think by, I think 45% of the population of Nigeria, 45%, I checked before coming on this stage, according to the United Nations, I think Nigerian population is about 213 million. That is the current figure that we have today. 213 million. 45% of that number are, are children are all young people that are between the ages of 16 and below. That means about 100 million people in Nigeria are between the ages of 16 and the one that is just born this moment. Imagine the power, imagine the number that is. How many, how many people voted for uh, President Muhammad Buhari to win his second term election? How many? So you can see the power of numbers of the youth. So participate and coordinate, bring yourselves together, you know, work uh, in harmony and try to see how you can, you know, take over. It's very easy. I want to, I want to end by giving you uh, a description of uh, leadership that was given uh, by uh, one of the leading politicians. I won't mention him, just these current ones. He said that leadership is when, it's just um, the same as when uh, Muslims go to pray. Just now, as we, are, uh, as, we are, as we went to pray for our Zuhur, that was when this point came to me. We went to pray about five of us, and then the, the, the first person said, ah, that we should be similar to the and we And I stepped back. You know, we, we, we said, told the other person, be similar to And he said, no, 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 no. And then we asked Abdurrahman. Abdurrahman quickly stepped in. And we all fall in line behind him. So this is how this political leader explains leadership. Leadership is basically the same as that. When people bring themselves together for any purpose, and then you know, they are looking for who to lead, who to lead, you know, the right person, once he steps forward, everybody will fall in line. That is how to build a movement. But you have to be sure that you have the capacity to lead. Don't say, I wish you said I should step forward and then problem. <laughs> Make sure you have the capacity to lead, and that is why self-development uh, is critical. You understand? And if you present yourself, I assure you that everybody would fall in line. And even if they don't fall in line that first time, they will fall in line either the second time, or the third time, or the, like, the fourth time, you know, and so on and so forth. And one day, you will find yourself leading everybody. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. I really appreciate it.